So now that training is completed, we're now finally ready to run inference on the test data. In order to run inference on the test data, we need to um, adjust the test data or process the test data as needed um, so that uh, the same um, processing steps are done to the test data as was done for the training. I'm not going to um, go over the um, all the notebooks that I did uh, for processing the test data, but essentially uh, I use the same notebooks that uh, I had already prepared for model prep, where um, I define the class methods to extract the frame audios and the features and labels. And I used the same notebooks, but passing the test data. But one thing I do want to note is that um, during the uh, data preparation for the test data, when running the um, extraction of the audio features, uh, we're using the extraction class. And it is important that we pass in both the training data and the test data so that when the normalization is wrong, the, uh, the normalization um, mean max scalar is fitted using the training data and transformed um, using the fitted um, scalar that was fitted on the training data to transform the test data. Um, it's important to do this because if we fit using the test data and then transform also using the test data, then um, th there is uh, could potentially be data leakage. So um, we have to make sure to pass in both the training data and the test data. So I did make a few minor changes to the two um, class methods that I had already defined previously to accommodate for the test data, but um, uh, essentially they uh, serve the same purpose as was uh, what we've done previously for the training data. And uh, the notebooks can be seen in the uh, inference notebook, not in, in the inference folder um, under the data prep folder in my, on my GitHub. So we already know that uh, our best performing models are the Wang Di Sinan and the R Guru RN models. So once the test data is um, uh, ready, we will run inference on the Wang Di Sinan and Guru RN models. It is um, common to um, kind of after the training, after the models are hyper tuned using the training data and the validation data before we run inference. It is common to um, combine the training data and the validation data together as a one large training data to run the train the model one more time uh, using the hypertuned parameters before running inference using the weights um, that was trained on the uh, bigger data set. So that is what I did. Basically, I combined the uh, training and validation data and then I trained uh, using the hyperparameters that was trained previously from all the experiments we ran, and then I ran inference. So the notebooks can again be seen in the inference folder. For the 1D CNN, it's under the 1D CNN folder, and then for the GRU RN, it's under the GRU RN folder. And this is very similar to what we've seen previously in when we are training the models except that I added a section where I combine the chain and validation into one large training data frame, and then I load the test data frame. I again shuffle the data and, and uh, create the sample weights based on rating. Again, the rating is uh, based on, uh, you know, if the audio is of good quality, then it has a higher rating and hence given the, uh, more weights during training. So for the 1D CNN model, I just copied the same model that uh, was created when we were training the 1D CNN um, during our experimentation. And for the 1D CNN model, if we look at the results, we can see that the best performing model uh, used MFCC plus RMS plus spectral centroid plus Continents, again, remember the continents are um, embeddings with a embedding dimension of two. So um, I use the same features, which is MFCC, RMS, spectral central and continents for training the model one last time. And the hyperparameters are using the same 
hyperparameters as uh, originally used during the experimentation for the best performing model. Once the model has been trained, we can run inference by um, using model.predict by passing in the test or continents and the test audio features. And we can use model.evaluate to evaluate the result. And here is the evaluation results. Uh, for the train overall training, we have the 98% accuracy. And then for the test results, we have 91%. And here's the confusion matrix for training and test. We can see that the this uh, test accuracy of 91% is comparable to that of the validation accuracy previously when, during our experimentation. This means the model is actually performing pretty well. Um, it's generalizing well to an unseen test set. Similarly, for the group RN model, I uh, pro processed it the same way by passing in the trained uh, group RNN model hyperparameters um, by using the best performing uh, parameters such as MFCC plus RMS without continents. Um, and um, the model was trained using the combination of training and validation set as the training data and uh, the inference was run on the test data. Again, we can see that the training accuracy was 99% and the test accuracy was 93%, which is comparable again to that of the validation accuracy during our experimentation. And um, in general, I'm pretty happy with the result of the inference. Um, you know, obviously we only had three classes here. So 93% test accuracy is not really that high, but considering our baseline of um, random guessing, and let me just go to our baseline real quick. So our baseline was if we were to randomly guess, then um, we would have 33% uh, test accuracy. So compared to our baseline, our um, t final test result of 93% is actually, um, you know, very, very big performance increase. And even com uh, compared to other models, such as the, um, traditional machine learning algorithms, um, we can see that 93% is actually a pretty good result. So um, I'm pretty happy with the with the result of of, um, of this project. Um, and the next step I will do is I will um, train the model using a vision transformer and also use some transfer learning technique, which I will discuss in um, as a separate projects in the future. And just to wrap up for the inference, it's uh, also important to realize the limitations. I already uh, discussed one limitation is that uh, we only selected three species um, while the original data set contained many different species. And another limitation is that, uh, as we can see from the distribution of the birds, majority of our samples actually come from Europe and South Africa. Um, and while Asia, Oceania, and um, uh, North America, even though there are birds, the number of samples are very um, scarce. So this shows that um, there is a bit of a fairness issue uh, in the data gathering process um, where the birds from Americas, Oceania, and uh, Asia are underrepresented. So we could improve the fairness by adjusting the get data gathering process or we can um, use some sampling weighting um, scheme to create more generalizable classification models. So for example, we can give the birds from certain region more weights during the training process. Or another technique we can try to Im implement is to use adversarial training. So in addition to have the model predict the bird species, we can also have the model predict the bird region and um, then we can use a negative back propagation to force the model to um, be more robust towards a different region. But yeah, so these are limitations and uh, inspirations for future research that uh, I want to work on um, in the future. Again, all the no on the notebooks, um, the code can be seen on my GitHub and um, the, all the analysis can be seen on my website. Thank you for tuning in.